So the single responsibility principle, usually uh, we think of it as applying to objects and classes where it says your object should just really be have one area of expertise. But we can also apply it to functions, and we say that a function should really only do one thing. It should be a unit, as in unit testing. Uh, but what about calling a function? When we do a function call, that does two things. There's the body of the function, and then it returns a value. So it breaks this rule. Well, not all functions break that rule. Some functions don't return a value. And other functions don't really have anything in their body, so to speak of, a simple getter. But in the main, they do break this rule. But did you know, there is a class in the C++ library since C++ 11 that allows you to split up calling a function and getting its result back. Anybody know what class that is? Three seconds. I'm actually not surprised that even at the ACU conference, nobody knew that it's package task. Because this task, this class has not been getting the love that I think it deserves. It's in the future header, but future is getting all the attention. And I think for a couple of minutes, I'd like to redress the balance. Now, it's got a couple of issues, uh, similar issues to which future itself has, in that these functions can only be called once on each object. Uh, but that might be all that you need. It's also move only. But let's see what we can do with it. A bit of a worked example. Take an arbitrary callable and some arguments to pass to it. Put that callable object into a task. Then get the future. Note we can call get future before we've even executed the task. To execute the task, put it on a thread with its arguments, fire and forget. Now get back the future. What we've just done is implement async. Except that with this async, the future we get back does not block on destruction because it didn't come from std async. The hardest part of writing this, it's only four lines, is figuring out what that return type is. It's clearly the hardest part, it's the longest line. Now, I've been using uh, package task to build a task-based library uh, uh, whereby I can combine different tasks together and build up work trees. And you may know that in the concurrency TS, uh, they're looking at doing the same sort of thing with future. But I think task is a more natural place to do this for a couple of reasons. One is I've been able to write these from outside the task class, the package task class, whereas future, they've actually needed to develop a whole new future class and put things inside it. Uh, secondly, the when any and the when all uh, from the experimental TS for future doesn't actually give you a future back. Whereas I've been able to do it so that it does, which makes this composable, like ranges. Um, you'll notice that I'm having to move the tasks around here. And this brings me to uh, another thing. Oh, sorry, I've gone ahead of myself. Um, one of the reasons I think you can't do this with future, but you can with task, is there's some extra work to be done. And package task gives us a place to put that work, which future has to worry about where and when is this going to happen. But like I said, I'm having to move all these tasks because it's a move only uh, type, which tells me that there's something missing, something that future has that uh, package task doesn't, uh, which is a shared equivalent, which is const and re-entry. We're allowed to call the functions more than once. Um, I love to talk about this thing. I've been working on it uh, on and off for over a year. I came to the last year's ACU conference with a specific question about it. Anthony Williams was amazing. He gave me some insights into making this work. So uh, if you want to find me and talk about this, uh, find me in the bar, or if you're watching on YouTube, comments below. Thank you very much.